What's going on guys and gals? Captain Cody Davis here for the first time in a long time. Um, been a long time since I've put any sort of video content up for you guys, so I do want to apologize for that right off the bat. It's killing me. Uh, it's not because I've been lazy, it's really just because I've been super busy um, fishing, uh, running trips obviously, doing all kinds of running around the state of Florida, been down in the Keys a lot. I've uh, been doing a lot of saltwater fishing, been doing a lot of snook fishing lately, which is just almost impossible to film the way I do it. So it's kind of hard for me to do that. Um, just been doing a lot of different things. And every time I have tried to get out and do any type of filming for you guys, nothing's cooperated. Either I get out there and the fish just don't cooperate at all. And, you know, one thing that I will tell you guys is I I'm just going to start really trying to show you guys the good and the bad. Uh, you know, I feel like everyone wants to see the highlight reel, you know, when I have one of those killer days out on Lake Okeechobee, but I really do want to start filming and showcasing you guys what the grind is. You know, when you go out there and you only fish and you only get five bites all day, show you how I approach it, how I adapt, what I do. And I have no problem doing that, but these days I'm talking about where they didn't cooperate. I didn't get bit for eight hours. Um, and I, I mean, how do I make a video out of that? Right? So Either that's happened and the fishing's just been absolutely horrible when I have the cameras on board or the weather has just been god awful. I went out just the other day, literally power pulled down in a spot, had to re-spool one reel, was slick, calm, beautiful. By the time I got done re-spooling, there were three foot waves breaking over the back of the boat, lightning crack and I had to make a run for it, sat in the truck for two hours, it never cleared up, had to pull the boat, I mean, things like that. So I apologize for not having any content out there um, and it's killing me. So that's why I decided I'm gonna do a fishing report for you guys right now. Uh, talk to you about what's going on out on Lake Okeechobee. You guys seem to like that. And then I'll kind of just, anything else I can kind of freeform jazz and think that you guys might be interested in, I'll kind of just uh, catch you guys up on what's going on. But we'll jump right into the fishing report first. Um, we're in the middle of, or beginning of August right now. And uh, the lake's at, just call it 14 foot. It's at like 1390, but it might as well be 14 foot which is a big deal. I mean, from my last fishing report, if I even did one, I think the last video I did was with me and Moose catching them fish on the south end of the lake. As you guys saw, Moose was out there swimming, running around. We were literally fishing in a foot of water that time. That's four feet deep now. Um, I can never remember a time. I've lived in South Florida my entire life, uh, fishing down here my whole life. I can never remember a time where it's been this hot it's disgusting. I'm in my garage right now and it's got to be 95 degrees and it's 630 in the afternoon. Um, by 9 a.m. out on the lake every day, it's been in the mid 90s. It is just steaming hot. Having some days where it's windy, which helps, but for the most part, it's just been slick, calm. And we have been getting just drowned with rain, thunder and lightning storms. Worse than I've ever seen it. I mean, in years past, pretty much it was a given. By 2 p.m., you were going to get a nasty storm that rolled through no matter where you were in the state. And it would last 15 minutes. A bad one would last 45 minutes. It would dump rain, tons of lightning. These have been popping up about 1130 in the morning and have lasted till dark and just dumping rain. Terrible wind. Lightning, like I mentioned. They're basically hurricanes. And it's been like that every single day for two and a half months. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear the thunder going on outside right now. The lake has just been rising like crazy. So what happened was they dropped the lake at a record rate. I don't remember a time where it dropped as fast as it did. And now I don't remember a time where it's come up this fast. It's just shooting up. So um, what's going on? I mean, we're in the middle of summer. The fish want to be on the outside edge. They want to be, you know, offshore with little offshore fishing we have on this lake. But I think the fish are a little bit confused. The water temperature right now is at like 94 degrees, super hot. And that's with three to four inches of rain being dumped on top every single day almost, right? If it weren't for that rain, we would be in the triple digits in water temperature, 100%, no doubt about it. Probably lose a lot of fish. I'm assuming fish would die. I mean, it's disgusting. Um, with that being all said, if you are able to get out there at 6 a.m., have your boat idling out into the lake at 6, where that sun is just starting to crack the surface, the bite has been pretty good. Um, not just with me. Um, like I said, I can't catch them if I go fishing by myself. But when I take a customer out, 
it could be sometimes a little bit of a grind, but we are catching fish and some nice fish. And some mornings we just flat out wreck them, catching a lot of fish and big fish. So it's hit and miss, it's typical summertime. Um, but here's the deal, we're typically this time of year, we're focusing deeper water because it's hotter, right? So you either wanna be in the rim canal, throwing rattle traps or crankbaiting the rocks, the dynamite holes on the south end of the lake off the rim canal and or fishing the main lake grass line, right? That's where these fish want to pull out to. It's the deepest water, but around grass. Flipping a big jig around the grass, throwing a swim jig in the morning, a spinner bait, things like that. With the water rising so fast, it's a natural instinct for Florida bass, at least, who want to follow water, right? When we get a big rain and they start pumping water in, whether it's in the Everglades, in the residential canals down here, or in Okeechobee, they want to follow that water up new structure, new feed, new grass, new vegetation. So I think these fish are, you have fish doing literally everything. Um, we have fish that work, people are catching in the Grim Canal in 20 feet of water, dragging Carolina rigs on the bottom. And we're catching some fish in water that's literally 96 degrees this deep, you can't see, but I mean a foot of water as far in the back as you can get, eating frogs, swim baits, things like that which is great, but it also makes it difficult. Um, one other thing we're having, which don't, I don't want this to get blown out of proportion because of all the bad criticism and media that gets shown on this lake every day on the news in this state. They think Lake Okeechobee is the devil because our water is ruining the state. People that live a hundred miles north of the lake say that our water is hurting their fishery, which is complete bullshit. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Um, but we do get algae blooms every year. Um, and the water, just with all the rain and the heat, there is a lot of green water. Um, that's something that if you are coming down here to fish, I wanna tell you to stay away from it. The fish don't die, it doesn't kill anything, but I don't think they particularly like to live in it. So I think they will move out of areas that have pockets of that green water and you can't miss it. I mean, it looks like pea soup, but it's clear, but it's green. But just the last trip I ran, we, one of the biggest schools of fish I've found all summer, we caught in the pea soup green water. We came around the t a point and we were a half mile away. It could see the fish schooling, blowing up, birds diving. It was awesome, totally great, made the trip, uh, caught them on top water, rattle traps, really anything you wanted to throw and big fish too. So that's kind of what's going on. You can catch fish right now on the lake doing whatever you feel comfortable doing, whatever you want to do. Um, my biggest thing, I would just tell you, try to stay away from the green water unless there's bait in it. But the green water moves. You know, you'll get a wind or rain, it'll kind of break it up, and one area will be green, and the next morning it's beautiful. Um, and that green water kind of goes away. So I don't really know all the scientific stuff that goes into what causes the green water. Um, but it's not killing the fish, and some fish, like I said, are living in it. It's just more of a confidence thing for me, but that's kind of the biggest thing that I would say to stay away from. People are catching fish north to south, east to west. The whole lake's catching fish, but it is a grind. I'm telling you that we're catching fish, we're catching a lot of fish and big fish, but like you just heard me say, there's days that I go out there by myself thinking I'm gonna go out and catch them or I'm going right to where me and my guide party left them the day before and they're gone. They've moved, they've shut down, maybe the bait left. Um, so it is a little bit of a grind, but there are big fish to be caught. Um, ran a trip a couple weeks ago and we had 30 pounds by 9 a.m. Uh, I caught an eight, so I mean, big fish, and I think we caught 35 fish that morning as well. So it is hot, bring a ton of water, uh, you know, because even if you say I'm gonna be off the water by 10, you find them schooling before you know it, it's noon, you didn't bring enough water, it is hot out there, guys. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. The heat has been absolutely no joke. Um, but kind of go through just to kind of, um, I don't know, key baits lately for me, I think I mentioned in a video like six months ago when I bought these things, these uh, ARC pencil poppers, been crushing them on these. You could throw them a mile. Who doesn't love catching them on top water? I do. I'm a big fan of the big Zara Spook, the old original Zara Spook, but a lot of the shad they've been eating out here have been smaller profile and that matches it perfect. A lot of fish are being very accustomed to seeing a rattle trap um, because it's a staple down here. With that being said, they're still eating, I mean, look, this this is a Yozuri. There's like hardly any paint left on it. It's just doled out, the hooks are straight. Uh, anything that mimics a shad. Uh, do, not, do not be afraid to throw a trap around. 
You catch one, most of the time they're not alone. Outside edge in the Kissimmee grass, definitely in the rim canal has been a big one for me, catching a lot of fish trapped in the rim canal, just any rocks or anything that looks good. Even things that don't look good, just going down the bank and you'll find a lot of fish there. Um, dragging a Senko, all right? I mean, it, it's, it's summertime fishing. Anything that works anywhere else in the country is gonna work down here. Um, a swim jig has worked as well. For whatever reason, I am not getting bit mimicking bluegill right now for the most part. A frog, a big jig, um, a black and blue swim jig, right? The black and blue swim jig I always talk about is a June bug one, I'm breaking everything. This guy, you know, just a big black and blue swim jig. Usually a go-to for me, usually think something that not only catches a lot of fish, but big fish. Um, haven't had much luck on it. Um, seems like the fish are just not really keyed in on bluegill at all, even the big fish. Um, going down a stretch, flipping the big jig and reeds, not getting a bite, spinning around and flipping it with just a bare, small beaver style bait, even downsizing to like a gambler, why not? And you get bit. Not only do you not get, you get a bite, you might get 10 bites in the same stretch. You just flip that bigger profile bait into. With that water being so hot, I can't help but think that these fish are going to be lethargic and don't really want to try and gorge themselves on a big meal because I know it's not comfortable down there for them. Um, so that's really it. Water's up. Don't have to worry about really hitting anything. Uh, just still run with caution. And if it looks good on Lake Okeechobee right now, I'm sure there's fish there. Typically, I would tell you to just focus all your efforts in the rim canal and on the outside edge, like I said, but <laughs> every time I push way back and tell myself, well, this looks amazing, but there's no way they're back here, they're back there. It is a grind. Don't get frustrated if you're down here, but if you guys are looking to book a trip this time of year, there are still fish to be caught, and we are catching some big ones. Uh, it's going to be a morning deal for the most part because like, I'm looking at my, I mean, these lightning and thunderstorms that have rolled in around 11 have just been terrible. So that's what's going on in the lake. Uh, I told you guys I've been raving about the peacock bass thing. That water shot up even more out there down in the glades. Uh, it's not what it was. If you wanna come down and catch peacock bass, we can still make it happen. You can still get bit, still a fun time. But um, it's not what it was when we were catching 120 in a four hour morning. Um, the water come up, you know, has come up with all this rain and it is making it a little bit more challenging. But that's not to say if it's on your bucket list to come down and do to not do it. Got my peacock box here. You can see I've just got all kinds of prop baits, usury prop baits, and walking baits, and torpedoes, whopper floppers, jerk baits. Fun, fast moving fishing. And uh, for whatever reason, the past few trips I've ran for the peacocks, I haven't been catching as many, but the size has definitely been improving. So that's pretty cool. Um, I think that's about it. Um, been down in the Keys a lot, been doing a lot of saltwater fishing. Again, the times I tried to film, the fish did not cooperate. We went out one morning, I was gonna try and film us catching some big mahi. We had to spin around, it was supposed to be one to two foot seas, and the weatherman was a little off and it was like six to eight. <laughs> Sloppy, mess, no fish, just getting beat up. Went out the next day, not expecting anything, no cameras. We crushed the big dolphin, crushed this. I mean, we, it's just, I can't have any luck filming lately. So um, that's why you guys haven't been seeing content. The new boat is amazing. Um, I still love it. Anyone in the market for, and I am not paid by Blazer. I don't, I, nothing. Um, I'm just telling you, if you guys want a badass boat for fishing Florida, where you can do both inshore fishing for snook, tarpon, jacks, whatever. Me and Breezy had that thing eight miles, nine miles offshore in the Keys catching dolphin, big kingfish, wahoo, blackfin. We caught everything out of it um, this past week. Uh, you know, it was pretty flat, so it was great. We got out there with Dragon Valley, who's around having a great time catching muttons. It's a great boat. It's simple, but it's well built, runs rough water very well, can handle a load. You know, if you have a big family, I mean, I, I fit five people in it, no problem with that bench seat in the back. Um, been loving it. Uh, I really don't have enough good things to say about the Blazer Ultimate Bay. It's everything I thought it would be. So anyone who was, um, you know, wondering about that, I don't think I have anything else. I know this is kind of boring, uh, but don't be afraid to get out on Lake Okeechobee. Don't be afraid to come visit me now. I'm saying now, but I mean, it's August, next week, next month, September, and uh, then we're going to start getting into prime time. I am booking into February already. All right, I've got dates mixed all up and down from now till then 
but I'm my customers that come to fish in the winter and in the fall are calling. So if you guys are looking to come down and book a trip, get your deposits in, give me a call sooner than later. Um, I had a guy just the other day who waited too long and literally the one day that he could fish was the one day that I already had booked up the other day. And uh, that was the day that my clients caught you know, almost 30 pounds. So um, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I try to keep, you, you can kind of keep up with what, what's going on. I do try to do pretty good about posting, you know, daily reports or daily pictures every time we go out. Um, so you don't have to wait for my lazy ass to film a video and take two months. Tight Splice Charters on both Facebook and Instagram. Um, when you come down, you have to go see Mike at Fishing uh, Okeechobee Fishing Headquarters. Probably gonna do a video there coming up soon. Uh, just go walk around and show you what anything new he's got, show you again the, the, the shop and whatnot. And that's it. Any questions you guys have, text me, call me. I'm easy to get a hold of for the most part. If I don't get to you, it's because I'm either in the water, I'm offshore, I had guys blow me up while I was in the Keys, I had no cell service, I apologize to the customers it took me forever to get back to. And hopefully I'm filming another one of these videos sooner than later, because uh, I like making the videos. I've just been, it's been crazy. Been running around like crazy. Um, I got to drive four hours tomorrow to go do something. I don't even remember what it is that Breezy's got me doing. She's coming with me though. So uh, anyway, any other things I've got, I will be sure to try and update you guys. Come down and fish Lake Okeechobee. If you're coming on your own, bring lots of water. It's hot. I appreciate you guys watching. Like, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Be safe out there.